very beginning of this that, that I'm taking a risk. I've pondered it, and I don't know what's the right thing to do right this minute. This exercise could be worked right now or next time in class, the approach that I'm going to take. Next time in class, we would be doing it after the fact. And you would know more because of what you experienced out of class, and you would be able to talk to me more, and you would have comfort level. But I'm choosing to work it before the fact. There is a homework problem for next time that asks you to make journal entries based on the calculations we're going to make. And I'm going to inject that into this exercise. So part of this exercise will be review that you should be fluent in. And part of it will be stretching and you'll be very uncomfortable and have that deer in the headlights look. It'll be a struggle in class today but it'll help you with your homework. In Monday's lecture, I reminded you, or told you, I am now reminding you, that there is an out-of-class lesson that I would recommend that you do before you do next time's homework, except that's what we're gonna do right now. If you had seen that before today, what we're doing right this minute would be easier. Since you haven't, We'll learn part of that today, and it won't be quite as beneficial because I'm choosing to do it in class. But if you want a replay of what's about to happen, presentation-wise, journal entry-wise, then there's an out-of-class lesson and a handout that goes with it that would be beneficial for you on the class website. Would you read 25-7 with me? It's at the bottom of page 1118. 25-7 says, we produce a single product and have prepared the following standard cost sheet for one unit of product. It takes us $20 for materials, $36 for labor, and some unmentioned amount of overhead to produce a product. $56 of known cost plus overhead. Is anybody with me right now? Yes. During the month of April, we really manufactured 230 units, and we really incurred the following actual cost, $4,940 for materials and $8,120 for labor. Compute the total price and quantity variances for materials. And when you finished, compute the total price and quantity variances for labor. Let's take the author's instructions literally. Would you help me calculate the total materials, variance. You're supposed to know how to do this. Could I please have a volunteer who would lead me through it? The total variance. Here we go. Uh, first, you take your standard. I like to write standard first. Okay. There are pros and cons of that. I'm going to stick with you. Let's do standard first. Yes. Here we go. Standard first, um, you have 8 pounds times 2.5. Uh, Eight pounds times two dollars and twenty-five cents. I'm guessing would give us that twenty dollars. Yeah. Keep going. And then you have actual. Are you total? Yeah, you got the twenty. Uh, then you have the actual. Um. Well, the actual amount, which would be the nineteen hundred pounds times times x. Times X. Is equal to? The 4,940. Okay. So if you multiply 8 pounds times 250, as you told me. Mm -hmm. Have you done that, by the way? No. I, I'm guessing that's $20, but it might be better if we establish that. you got to calculate. Yeah. yeah. Is that $20? Yes. Alexis? One second. <laughs> So I've got twenty dollars on the one hand, standard, mm -hmm. and four thousand nine hundred and forty on the other hand. Does this look like we're going the place we want to go? No. It's a whopping variance, isn't it? Yes. So I which one of these seems right, and which of the these needs a little tweaking? Um, 
Um, the first one is tweaking the standard. How are we going to do this? Um, we can take that $20 and multiply it by something. By the 230 units. Ah. The standard cost we should have incurred, we should have incurred for each unit on which we worked. The standard should be 230 units actually produced times the eight pounds that we should have used per item. That comes out to $1,840. It might not have been the way you approached it, but I think it'll become obvious in a minute or two why we're doing it that way. You said dollars? This is pounds. Huh? This is 230 units produced, eight pounds. This is pounds. Okay. And you're right. I need to turn that to dollars. Okay. So I should have used 1,840 pounds at what price? At 250. $2.50. $2.50 cents is the standard price per pound if I multiply that by two dollars and fifty cents, I get uh, auditors. Right. And we found the actual numbers to be nineteen hundred pounds and forty nine hundred and forty dollars of cost. Alexis, do you remember the part about nineteen hundred times X yes. is forty nine forty? Yeah. Do I have to have this number right this minute, Alexis? No. I don't. Do I, class, no. have to have this number right this minute? No. I don't. Mm -hmm. Do I have to know this number later? Yes. Mm -hmm. Might now be a good time to find it. Yes. Mm -hmm. How would I find it? Divide um, 4940 4, by uh, 19,000. Is correct. What'd you get? Didn't do it. I'm waiting. I got 2.6. Oh, I got Oh. Two dollars and sixty cents. Auditors. Two dollars and sixty cents wasn't given in the problem, but we calculated if you've got a question about it, I think get this number you ought to ask me right this now. Alexis, compare these two. Um, Tell me what you got. Unfavorable. <laughs> I was thinking about a dollar. Oh, <laughs> um, that's 340 negative. 340 favorable or unfavorable? Unfavorable. 340 unfavorable. Tell me two ways, preferably in order, that you know it's unfavorable. Um, in order. I didn't hear that one. No, I said in order. <laughs> in order. <laughs> You're in the in order part. Well, it's unfavorable because it's negative. That's the second one. Okay. And people always want to give that one first. Okay. And that's the reason I said in order. <laughs> okay. Um, also because that actual amount is more, the actual amount of limbs used, I mean pounds used, is more than the standard amount. The actual figure is greater than the standard figure. That's what I wanted you to say okay. first. I want you to think, I want you to understand it, I want you to reach the right conclusion, I want you to use the math to check your answer, not give you your answer. Do you understand the difference? Yeah. I want you to have a check figure, okay? Are y'all with me or not? Yeah. Yes? And we don't know who in the organization is responsible for this. We'd like to go to somebody and get better. So we're going to break this total variance up into component parts. We're taking the author's instructions literally, calculate the price variance. I need a brand new volunteer who is willing to lead me through the determination of the price variance. Sam. I'll start with standard. You like to write standard first, Sam? Yes. I do too. How much? $2.50. Compared to what? The actual cost of $2.50. Where'd that number come from? That came from a book. It wasn't in the book. No, we figured it out before. Ah, uh, we didn't realize we needed it so quickly, did we? We did. So, let's find that difference, Sam. It is uh, unfavorable. No, 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 I need a dollar amount. Ten cents. Ten cents, Sam, pocket change. I mean, if I've got a little teeny hole in my pocket and I'm walking up the... the 
sidewalk from the parking lot today and I, I hear this little dink on the ground and I look back and there's 10 cents that's falling out of that little teeny hole in my pocket. I might not even walk back and pick it up. Pocket check. I, I, I would walk back and pick it up, okay? <laughs> it's just an example. Sam, 10 cents. No big deal. You're supposed to say, it adds up. Uh, if you expand this to all the units to which this tins and supplies, it could be a big deal. Now, Sam, since we eliminated the overhead stuff, our biggest question this week is what to multiply by. You have two choices. You could multiply this 10 cent differential times the 1,840 standard pounds we should have used, or the 1,900 pounds we really used. Which will it be? It's going to always be actual. You like always? That means you can memorize it? <laughs> but there should be some reason that there's an always. True. Some rationale. When you calculate the price variance, you always multiply by the actual amount that you've used in production. And I don't have a lot of ways to explain this to you. When you heard them once and you hear them over and over again, they just all sound the same. Okay, I don't have five or six different ways to try to convince you. It's going to sound a lot like money's lecture. These 1,900 pounds of materials came through from the storage area to this working area of manufacturing and passed on into finished goods, the storage area. They just come this way one time. We're going to account for them the one time that they pass through. I paid 10 cents extra for them. I paid 10 cents extra for the 60 pounds extra that I used. This is kind of a little double whammy. Part of this variance is because I used more pounds. Part of this variance is because I paid more for them. They're both being lumped together here. Think with me, what if that 1,900 pounds had been 1,800 pounds? Then the 40 pounds that didn't come through they're still in the material storeroom. They'll come through next month and we'll account for the 10 cent differential on them next month when they come through. Anybody with me? You're supposed to know how to do this. You're not supposed to know how to do what I'm about to stretch you and ask you to do. I need you to be able to make journal entries from this. One of the objectives this week is standard costs in the accounts. How do standard costs affect journal entries? How do we reflect them on the financial statements ultimately? We need to make a journal entry or two along the way. And I'm just going to dictate them, and you're going to have to listen, and we're going to try to come up with something collectively, and we're going to see how to record this. Sam, I got off your case too quickly. This 10 cents times 1900 is? $190, you told me it was unfavorable a long, a long time ago because actual is greater than standard. We wrote standard first and got a negative number. I've got a $190 unfavorable materials price variance. Now, I'm taking you back to chapter 20. I hope I got the chapter number correct. Where we introduced you to job order cost account, the flow of costs through the accounts, the account titles, and the journal increase necessary to accomplish what we need to. And I'm asking you what entry you would have made in chapters 20 or 21 if you read in the book, purchased raw materials on account. Half the class or more ought to be able to make me an entry, purchased raw materials on account. Who's going to do it for me? I need a hand up. Brandy. David, raw materials. Debit raw materials, credit accounts payable for numbers that we need to find or identify. Yes. I believe that we should credit accounts payable with actual times actual. 
Some of these are going to be actual times actual, standard times standard, actual times standard, standard times actual, four possibilities. This one is the most obvious one to me, actual times actual, because we're buying a number of goods, real items, from somebody else who's going to determine the price. They don't give a flip about our little teeny standard cost system. They're setting their own prices. They're in the driver's seat. Do we know actual times actual in this problem? Is it on the screen someplace? Can you identify it? Help me. 4,940. It's there someplace. Remember when we did standard times standard and actual times actual? I think it's 4,940. Do you see it? <laughs> now, when those same goods get to our place, we want to introduce them into our system as the actual goods we buy at the standard price that we use in our system. Is that number on the screen any place? I don't think it is. Can you find me actual goods, 1,900 pounds, times the standard price, $2.50? 4750 4750 but I thought debits and credits were supposed to equal. Mm -hmm. They don't. Mm -hmm. Has anybody found the difference in these two? Do I need a debit or a credit to make this entry balance? Debit. You can do that part. Do I need a debit or a credit to make this entry balance? Debit. I need a debit. What's the difference in these two numbers? Who's got me the number? Say it with? 190. 190 auditors? Yeah. Look here, look here. There it is. Well. <laughs> <laughs> what name shall be given this 190 debit? The name of the account, oddly enough, Brandy, is this is the materials price variance. It's an account. The materials price variance needs to be debited. Let's talk about a typical variance account. There are six of them. When you debit them, they're favorable or unfavorable. When you credit them, they're favorable or unfavorable. Let's match them up. Anybody know? Before I tell you, Brandy? Unfavorable variances are debited to this account. Therefore, favorable variances are credited to this account. If I needed a debit in this entry, I would call it unfavorable. Is anybody with me right this minute? Are we making progress? Now, the first time we did this, this time, we calculated this first and then made a journal entry from it. When I answer Alexa's question in a second, I'm going to take the opposite approach. I'm going to make a journal entry first, and then we're going to calculate it and prove it. Alexis. Okay. Um, I didn't understand exactly how you figured out the un, um, whether it was unfavorable or favorable on the KT account. Um, it is just is what it is. That's the way it works. Okay, I'll try harder than that. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm not satisfied with that explanation. Tell me about revenue and expense. Which one of those is favorable and which is unfavorable? Revenue is? Unfavorable. Revenue favorable. is? Favorable. Yeah, I got a tie score from you. <laughs> revenue is? Favorable. Expenses are? Unfavorable. Yeah, it's a silly connection, but that's true, isn't it? Uh -huh. Revenue is normal balance is debit or credit? Credit. If this were a revenue account, and, and, sorry, I did that. Revenue accounts have credit balances and are favorable. Mm -hmm. Expense accounts have unfavorable debit balances. Right. So that's one of the ways I remember it. Call that memorization if you want to. Okay. But it's not. <laughs> <laughs> or, or my short-term memory shot one or the other, because I have to rethink it a whole lot. <laughs> Alexis, I, I, I can give a longer explanation of that in a minute, but we all know I'm on a little time budget. Okay. okay? So accept that for the time being. Be curious about it. I don't want to squash your curiosity. Accept it. Let's move on, and then let's investigate it and get better at it as we go along. Okay? Now, 
This was materials purchased on account. This is materials requisitioned for use in the factory. Make me an entry to record materials requisitioned. Now, you think you're not supposed to know this, and you are. I, I kind of let you off the hook. I, I said, I'm going to stretch you. You're not supposed to know this part. It's this part you're not supposed to know. The rest of the journal entry should look familiar. May I please have some help? Tucker. Uh, debit like work in process? Debit like work in process. <laughs> <laughs> That it work in process. I just have one thing to say about that. Dude. Debit work in process. And credit raw materials. And credit raw materials is credit. Way to go, Tucker. You know, I'm thinking that work in process ought to be standard times standard. It's our system. In our system, it ought to be standard costs that move throughout this. Is standard times standard any place on the screen, yeah. Tucker? Yes. Where is it? Uh, $4,600. It's $4,600. And I'm thinking this raw materials requisition is the actual amount of goods that we placed into service times the standard price, and I think I might have done that already. Isn't that this figure? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that's $4,750. <clears throat> A difference of, I've had 150 suggested, I need an audit. Aaron, do I need a debit or a credit to make this entry balance? Debit. If I debited this for $150, would that be a favorable variance or an unfavorable variance? Unfavorable. That's unfavorable. What name shall be given this account? Materials quality. Quantity this is the materials quantity variance. It's a debit, it's unfavorable. That's one way to get it, plugging it. The way you were introduced to getting it in Monday's lecture and had an opportunity to reinforce in your homework for today would be to solve for it. Can you help me calculate the materials quantity variance? Would you lead me through it step by step? Where are you willing volunteer? Go, Nick. Standard. You like to write standard first, Nick? Yes. Did you ever try it the other way? No. Then how do you know you might not like that better? This would work probably the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Nick. So you get the standard of 1840. Good. And then your actual of 1900. Good. Upon the difference is 60 unfavorable. How do you know it's unfavorable? Two ways in order. Because actual is more than standard. Way to go, Nick. And? It's negative. Yeah, you can't just say it's negative. Because the book's negative means something different than our negative. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Have y'all looked enough, investigated enough to know that's true? Mm -hmm. You have to say a phrase before that. We wrote standard first and got a negative number. There's a cause-effect relationship going on here. We wrote standard first and got a negative number, and you said it in the right order. You decided first and then used the mathematical sign to to check your answer. Way to go, Nick. 60 pounds? Yes, Nick? Yes. I thought this system worked in dollars. It does. Let's convert pounds to dollars. You've got a choice, Nick, of multiplying those 60 pounds times the $2.50 standard rate or the $2.60 actual rate. Which will you choose? Always use standard. Always use standard. You're just going <laughs> to memorize it and always use standard. <laughs> and hope you know it. Two dollars in which is it? Two fifty times sixty, Nick, is? You really multiplied it out. Promise? One hundred and fifty is the same number we got here. How y'all feeling right about now? Good? Yes? Yeah. Okay. So, I've got two unfavorable variances. Shall I add or subtract? And get $340 was the same amount we got as the check figure at the beginning, the total variance. Bentley. So why do you use uh, standard 
multiply it times that. Is Let's ask Nick. Nick, why do you use standard? Because uh, that's we're producing it, so that's what we're. So we're the whys are so important, Bentley, but they're hard to come up with sometimes, and they're not always parallel. When I explain this one that you're not asking, I, for the very first time, honestly, made this funny-looking little thing right here that I was pretty proud of and hope to remember to do tomorrow, and I probably will, but I really hope I remember to do it in summer school this summer. There were two component parts. Part of this total variance is because of the 10 cent difference. And part of this total variance was because of the 60 pounds. That argument is not parallel with the argument I'm about to give you to answer the question you asked me. Your question was, when you calculate the quantity variance, why do you always multiply by standard, wasn't it? Here's my best answer. I think of this as a scientific experiment. If we do more than one thing to the lab rats and have success, we don't know which of those one things caused that success. In the laboratory, we've learned to vary one thing at a time. I am varying quantity. I'm keeping price constant. You try to use that argument on this one, it falls apart. So. I guess you have to memorize which argument goes with which. You didn't hear me say that. <laughs> I've never asked you to memorize anything, and I hope I don't. Let me try one more time, Bentley. Sometimes I think you need to consider the wrong answer to see what's wrong with it. Consider multiplying by 260. 10 cents of my answer is because of price. This is the quantity variance. I don't want any of the answer to be because of price. I've already measured the effect of price in the price variance. Did I get through to you, Bentley? Yes. Who's got a question? Here we go again. The first time we did this one, we calculated it and then made a journal. So I'm proposing that we make a journal entry and then calculate it. Even though we did that here, I still want to be the opposite of this one. So remember these were materials purchased on account. Materials requisitioned for the use in the factory. This is factory wages incurred. Factory wages incurred. Can you journalize this for me, please? Hurry, I don't have all day. Please, Jeff. Debit factory labor and credit wages payable. Debit factory labor, credit wages payable is correct in chapters 20, 21, and now 25. Debit factory labor, credit wages payable. I think the credit to wages payable ought to be the actual amount of time they worked times the actual rate of pay we agreed to pay them. You're the person getting this check. Do you agree with me or don't you? Yes or no? Then this actual times actual? Uh, this is a little awkward because we haven't made the calculation yet. Uh, one of the things I'm trying to show you is that maybe if we'd made the calculation, this would be a little more comforting to do. Can you find me actual times actual in this problem? It's about labor. Direct labor is stated to be 8120. Yes or no? Yes. Do I have the right number? Yes. Do you see it in the book? If you don't, I'll chase it down for you one more time. I think that's the amount that we paid them, or agreed to pay them, incur. Factory labor probably needs to be debited with this actual hours they worked times the standard price we should have paid them. I don't have these memorized. If I miss one of these, you need to correct me. Actual hours, standard rate. 
actual hours are stated in the problem to be I heard several people say 700 and I don't see oh there it is 700 hours times the standard rate the standard rate is $12 per hour 700 times 12 is that what I said yeah. is 8400 8, a difference of 260 credit Jeff says 280 280 credit is, is he right class Yes or no? Yeah. Is this variance favorable or unfavorable? Because I need a credit. What name shall be given this variance? Nick, was that you? Talk. It's the price. Labor price. This is the labor price variance, and it's favorable. That seemed a little more painful than let's set it all up and get all the right numbers and lift the numbers off the calculation we've made. Don't you agree? Let's do very nothing. The total labor variance is standard times standard compared with actual times actual. Find me some numbers. Find them fast. For labor, we're to spend three hours per unit we produce 230 units. If we were to work three hours on each of them, we should have worked 690 hours. I could use an order. Right. And I'm doing standard times standard varying nothing. Therefore, 690 needs to be multiplied by the standard $12 an hour is 82.80. Actual times actual is almost given. 700 hours were really worked that cost us $8,120. Anything missing here? Did we have to have it right now? No. Do we need it soon? Wouldn't now be a good time to find it? How, one person tell me. Brandy, tell me. Did you do it? What'd you get? I need an auditor. $11.60. I've got A120 in actual cost, which are less than standard cost of 8280. Is this variance favorable or unfavorable? Everybody said this is a favorable variance. Actual costs are less. Let's do the price variance. Pick it up. Who's willing? Alexis. Um, for standard, you have $12, and for actual, you have eleven sixty, dollars and that comes out to um, $40, unfavorable. That's a $0.40 cent difference, favorable or unfavorable? Unfavorable. Why? Because the standard... Rate it, the standard figure is less than the Is it? Yeah. I mean, no, it's more. No, it's favorable. I got two yeah. votes for unfavorable and no. one vote. <laughs> it's favorable. It's I got a tie score. Favorable. <laughs> Tell me why it's favorable. It's favorable because the standard amount is greater than the actual. Or actual is less than standard, either way you want to say it. Did the mathematical sign help? You check your logic and find your own mistake before I had to point it out to you? Yes. <laughs> Didn't they? You should have relied on that. 40 cents times something. When you calculate the price variance, you need to make this apply to a whole lot of stuff by multiplying by standard or actual, Brandon. Actual. Say an amount. 700. 700 actual hours were worked. We saved 40 cents an hour on each of those hours, a total, Brandon, of? 280. 280 favorable or unfavorable? Favorable. Whee! <laughs> Look. You're dismissed. I'm going to make this journal entry, and I'm not going to make it in class next time. You may stay if you would like to. Did you hear me? The last time we did this one, we made the entry first and then made the calculation. 
let's make the calculation first and make a journal entry from it. Let's do the labor quantity variance. What volunteer may I have to make me this calculation at warp speed? Brandy, did you do this one for me last time? Okay, go. 690 for standard minus the 700 for actual. You should get um, a negative 10 dollars. Favorable or unfavorable? Um, that would be unfavorable. Two ways you knew in order. Because actual is greater than standard. Thank you. And you have a negative. You wrote standard first and got a negative number. Good. 10 hours. Let's convert hours to dollars. We should multiply by the $12 standard price or the $11.60 actual price. Pick one. When you calculate the quantity variance, do you always multiply by standard? There must be some good reason for that. I'm going to ask you all about that next time in class. So you got 120 favorable or unfavorable. You told me that a long time ago. Let's make an entry. This is purchase raw materials on account. This is materials requisition for use in the factory. This is factory wages incurred. This is applied labor costs to production. It's a group project. Applied labor costs to production. If you can contribute one thing to this, one, one, one account name, raise your hand and tell me. Aaron? Uh, debit working process. Debit working process is correct. You on the hook or off the hook, Aaron? I'll stay on the hook. Um, Credit? Factory labor. Factory labor. That is the same entry we made in Chapter 20 job order, Chapter 21 process, and now we're making the same entry in the standard cost system. Do you see some reason that we're doing these chapters out of order? Yes or no? They connect too nicely for us to wait three weeks to do this stuff. Now, this work in process figure should be standard times standard. Is that number on the screen any place? Mm -hmm. Standard times standard was what up in the total calculation. It looks to me like it's 80 to 80. Did I find the right number? Mm -hmm. This number, factory labor, should be the actual hours employees worked times the standard rate of pay we should have paid them. And I think I calculated that already. I think that's this 8400, excuse me, 8400 figure. The difference in these two is the variance. The difference in these two is 120 debit or 120 credit. 120 debit is favorable or unfavorable? What name shall be given this? Labor this is labor quantity variance. 120 unfavorable is the same answer we got before. There you go. I've got one favorable and one unfavorable variance. Shall I add or subtract? Subtract, subtract and get 160 favorable. The same answer we got up at the start. That's the check figure. That's how we know we got it right. That's going to help you do your homework for next time. I'd encourage you to do it soon. Have a nice